please join me in Gasho. Namo Amida Uts. 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 Good morning. Good morning. It's been a while. This is my first time standing here in over two and a half years. Um, I'd like to read a, a quotation, so uh, please join me in Gasho as I read this uh, from uh, Shinran Chonin's Hymns of the Pure Land Masters on Shandao. Shakyamuni and Amida are our father and our mother, full of love and compassion for us. Guiding us through various skillful means, they bring us to awaken the supreme Shinjin. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namanda. 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 So today's talk uh, is about cooking, uh, specifically uh, sukiyaki. I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, I don't know how to make it, but I'm going to have to figure it out between now and about uh, February or March of this year. Uh, most, if not all of you, uh, know my wife, Reverend Rosalie May. She has uh, taken a job as the uh, sort of interim minister at the Yakima Buddhist Temple. And uh, it's, been, it's been interesting. <laughs> the, um, uh, you know, she's, so, uh, every other week, she's now driving to, to Yakima, and uh, last week, I was uh, able to join her for that uh, for that trip. And uh, now, she and I were both ordained together six years ago. I've been a minister for six years. I, it's still it's still a little fuzzy. I mean, kind of half of it now has been this, right? <laughs> this uh, you know, uh, ministering over computers and Zoom sessions and, and things like that. So. Uh, so coming into this temple, um, and knowing some of the people from Yakima, we've both been guests there before, um, but, uh, uh, you know, they, they know us, they know who, who we are, but it's still, uh, you know, coming in and, you know, sort of sharing and talking and, you know, gathering was, was really different. Um, but one thing that I noticed that was different is that in the Yakima Buddhist temple, I am what is known as a bomori. I'm a temple wife. <laughs> I, am not a, I am not the minister of Yakima Buddhist temple. I am the spouse of the minister of Yakima Buddhist temple. And that, can, that comes with it a lot of new and different responsibilities. And it is as important for me to present myself as that temple spouse as it is for Rosalie to present herself as the minister. So when I went, I did not bring my robes. When I went, I did not sit on the Nijin as we chanted. When we had our Dharma talk after the, the fact, even though there were some really good questions that I really, really, really wanted to answer because I really know the answer to the questions. <laughs> I didn't answer the questions because the people that are there that are attending that temple know what an authority figure looks like. They know who the leader of the room is. And they need to know that it is different from what they are used to. My name, when I took a Buddhist name in this temple, you actually all just chanted it. It is Byodo. You hear it at the, at the very end. Byodo se yisai. May this merit value apply equally. Equality matters. This is something that is baked into Buddhism. We are all the same. We are all fellow travelers on this path. We need to understand the effects of impermanence uh, of, the, of the conditioned nature of existence. And I have a great example of this. We went to Los Angeles in 2013. I was there for a conference. Rosalie came along with me. And we decided, you know, let's go see Reverend Moss at Senshin Buddhist Temple. We'd heard about this, this minister, Reverend Moss Kadani. 
uh, in Senshin. He'd been a minister there since 1968, so 45 years he was the head minister of this. I think the longest running minister of anywhere in, uh, in BCA. We're like, this is great. We're going to go to this place we've heard all about. We're going to see what this, what, this is, what this is all like, what it's like to hear him talk. And he comes out, and literally the first thing out of his mouth is, I'm retiring in front of 200 people. Never known another minister in this temple, most of them. And that's it right there. Things are impermanent. Uh, we didn't all expect that we'd be wearing these masks in 2022. Uh, I picked the black ones because they go with the outfit. But this is what it is like. It is not like when I walked in here, I don't know how many, what, 15, yeah, 15 years ago for the, for the first time. There are lots fewer people that are sit sitting here. There are lots more online than there used to be, which was zero before we started doing the services online. And we are, like, this, this is all uh, a part of the teaching. That things aren't the way that they used to be. Things change. Things are impermanent. Um, there's a term in, in Buddhism called conditioned. These are, there's, there's conditioned and there's unconditioned uh, objects or dharmas. Um, to, and to back up a little bit. There's dharma with a small d, which is uh, like a thing, a, a concept, an idea. Uh, kind of translates to like, do you know the difference between a fact and a factoid? Like a fact is something that's like true, and a factoid is something that's actually false but sounds like it's true. So uh, that's kind of what a small d dharma is. It's something that may be true like a little, or temporarily, or might not be true at all. But the big D Dharma, the Dharma of the Buddha, is something that's true all the time, unconditioned. No matter where you are, no matter what you do, this is the truth of the universe. And so conditioned reality means that it's impermanent. It's not always the case. It's not always true. It's not always the same. And uh, you know, actually, in, in Christianity, some of you have may, like, if you have, have ever been around uh, Christians uh, like talking about things as worldly, uh, which sounds like a you know, cosmopolitan, no, you're from around the world. Worldly has kind of a pejorative meaning in, in Christianity. It's kind of like they're selfish or they're, they're, not really, they're not really into it. So like a worldly Christian is somebody who practices the religion without actually really internalizing it. Conditioned Buddhism, I guess, could be the same way. It's possible to become attached to the trappings of the religion, to the things the way that you see them, more so than what it is meant to teach you. And to go back to what Reverend Ma said in this talk, he came out and he told all of these people, I'm going away. And you're going to come back to me after I leave, and you're going to talk to me about the new minister that came along. And you're going to say, Sensei, the new minister wants us to do this. The new minister is changing that. The new minister is doing stuff that we don't, that we don't agree with or don't want to do. And he says, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you when you do that to me. If you came here expecting everything to be the same, you have not learned the lessons of Buddhism. You have to understand that these things change. This temple, the, the, play, the day that you walked into it, is going to be different from the day that you last walk out of it. The composition of it, who is leading it, how it's led, these are all changing things. These are all because we are in this conditioned world. We are in a world that is constantly changing. It is not up to us to hold a temple or a tradition in place so that it's always the same for everyone. The purpose of equality is for us all to have the same opportunity to learn these lessons. And so from here back, 
we try to keep this as unconditioned as possible. We are chanting chants that haven't changed in 500 years. We try to keep everything up here to, to teach the lessons of what is real and true. And when I stand out here, everything is impermanent. We have to understand that things are going to change. Things are going to look different from the way that they, that they are. The needs of the people that attend this, this temple and the, that, that come to hear the, the Dharma are changing. It's not the same as it was even when I came 15 years ago. It's obviously not the same as it was two years ago, but it is the Dharma. We are trying to teach a higher, a, a higher set of truths in the way that we are, are going about this. And it requires us not to be attached to what's going on here, but to understand what it is that we are talking about when we talk about uh, Amida Buddha, what we, what we are talking about when we talk about Shinran Chunin, what we talk about Shakyamuni Buddha. And to tie this back to the, the original quote, the last line, they bring us to awaken the Supreme Shinjin. There's a note that's attached to this in the collective works of Shinran. And it says that the, the word awaken was taken from the Japanese word hotsuki. And that hotsu means to awaken what has existed from the past. Ki means to give rise to something new for the first time. So the awakening isn't just like, oh, here's Shinjin. Here's this, here's this understanding that we have about our, 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 trend, you know, about our, our crossing over into an understanding of what Jodo Shinchu is about. It is about creating something new as well. We have to be able to hold these two things together. The past is important. It is critical. It is in the definition of this. But we also need to grow. We also need to change. What is new is also a part of the Dharma. And I think that's a very important thing. And that's why I'm learning how to make sukiyaki before next February. What my head minister of the Yakima Buddhist temple is going to need is for me to get deep into, I guess, noodles and shoyu and beef. <laughs> I, need to, I need to occupy this role it wasn't the one that I planned for. It wasn't the one that I trained for. But it is what is needed for me to help propagate the, the teachings in the temple that I am now partially attached to. So with that, I want to read this, this quote back uh, just to, uh, as a reminder. So please join me in Gasho. Shakyamuni and Amida are our father and our mother, full of love and compassion for us. Guiding us through various skillful means, they bring us to awaken the Supreme Shinji. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Namanda. 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 Thank you all for coming. Uh, I look forward to seeing even more of you soon. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, have a, have a pleasant weekend and, uh, and enjoy your Labor Day.